Welcome back. This is Christina with Christie's Kitchen and this is Fine Dining Made Simple. Today on this episode, I am going to show you how to make steak with a garlic chive butter, smoked gouda potatoes, honey roasted rainbow carrots, balsamic glazed Brussels sprouts, corn on the cob with some Parmesan parsley butter, um, and some Italian sourdough garlic bread. Now, half of what I'm making tonight for dinner um, actually comes from my little outing today. I got the opportunity to go to the farmer's market uh, that's here local in town and I found rainbow carrots, beautiful Brussels sprouts. Um, I actually found a vendor there who sells sourdough bread, but not only that, she rolls Italian herbs into it. So I'm going to do some garlic butter to go on top and then I'm going to make an Italian, Italian sourdough garlic bread. Um, of course, corn on the cob from another vendor, and it's white corn on the cob. So a lot of this is inspired by um, Fresh and also supporting local during uh, COVID-19 right now. Um, so stay tuned, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so I've got my big baking pan. Of course, my coconut cooking spray, because that's the one I like the best. The best, excuse me. Um, so my oven is heated to 400 degrees. So we're going to start simple because I'm doing three different vegetables tonight and they all have to go in the oven. I'm going to do my Brussels sprouts and my potatoes on the same tray and then I'll do my carrots on a separate tray. So all you're going to do is literally just pour all your Brussels sprouts. And these are some massive Brussels sprouts too. That's why I love these. I mean, that's a quarter of a Brussels sprout compared to the palm of my hand for those of you that know me. Okay, so and then all I'm going to do is just do a nice like drizzle of olive oil that just helps it cook a touch and then a little bit of my everybody guess it yep pink himalayan salt okay and then for okay so now i'm gonna do my potatoes so we're just gonna and we have somebody coming over for dinner tonight so that's why i'm doing so incredibly much food that way we make sure that we have more than enough because we love to share our food with people. And I'm just basically gonna do the same thing with the potatoes. We're gonna do a nice light drizzle of olive oil and a little bit of salt. Okay, my olive oil. And a nice touch of salt. And these are just gonna go in the oven for the next 18 to 22-ish minutes, depending how long they wanna cook. Since potatoes are raw and they take a little bit longer, I put those on the back side of the burner. Since my oven is smaller, I can't put it in, well, for you guys, it would be put it in this way. I literally have to put it in this way. So these are gonna be in the back and these will be up towards the front. That way the Brussels sprouts don't burn. All right, so we're gonna get those in and I'm gonna put those on bottom. Just kidding. I'm gonna put them on the top. Again, the pan is bigger than the oven, so. Okay, now I'm gonna spray down my other cookie sheet. And we're going to, look how pretty these are. You got purple with a yellow center. I've got, of course, your typical carrot color, and I've got yellow. So these are kind of fun. So I'm just gonna mix these up in my bowl, and then I'm just gonna toss them out on my pan. That way I get pretty color and these are going to be honey roasted too so that just makes them even better because it'll be a little bit sweet and then we just do a nice drizzle of olive oil on this one this one I pre-measured out because I don't want too much olive oil being they're going to have the honey and then I'm going to do just a touch of salt this gives that slight savory flavor I have a gnat in my house that's driving me bonkers how funny is that and for those of you that know me, no, it's not my husband. <laughs> All right, we're just going to kind of give those a good little shake, shake, shake. All right, and then these go in the oven. We'll put these on the bottom. And that's three sides right there already ready and raring to go. Okay, now I'm going to kindly clean all the salt off my stove. I don't want a pan catching hold of that and taking off somewhere. Um, I do already have my corn going here, my white corn. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit for y'all. There we go. So I do already have my white corn going. So now I'm going to keep working on everything else. Three bowls. Why do I have three bowls, you ask? 
because I got to make three different kinds of butter. Guess who's in town? <laughs> there he is. Somebody has to make an appearance at least once. Okay. I'm in the deck. I'm in the deck. Got my softened butter, and I'm gonna use a fork. So as you can see, the butter is, I mean, I'm cutting through that with ease with a fork. We're gonna add our Parmesan cheese and then a touch of parsley to start just because you want to judge kind of where you're you want it to be thick enough that it's gonna to stick to your corn but not so thick that it's like pouring solid a solid mass on your butter if it ever gets too thin you can always put it in the refrigerator or the, um, the freezer for a few minutes just to kind of stiffen it back up just about there. Alright, so I'm going to add a little bit more parsley. A little more parsley never hurt anybody, right? Okay. Scrape that off and down. See? Look at that. Look how easy that was. That is done, and it was all of about maybe a minute, minute and a half. So now we'll just, because you don't want to use a fork to try and put it on your, on your corn, because that just generally does not go well. <laughs> all right, so now I have my Parmesan parsley butter. I'm going to go put this in the refrigerator so that it can solid up. Next is going to be our garlic butter for our garlic bread. Again, a whole stick of butter. As you can see, I'm not shy with butter, but for this one, just because it's soft, I'm actually going to go ahead and microwave it for just a couple of seconds, just so that that way I can get the little more liquid built up in it. Okay, so my butter is done. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down because I'm going to need this one in a few minutes. All right, so I've got my butter, I've got my garlic powder, and I've got, guess what? Parsley. So this one I actually like to do with a spoon. I actually like to do my garlic, my garlic butter for bread with a spoon because then it's easier to put onto my actual bread. What we're gonna do is just kind of mingle this down just a bit. Take the liquid parts, add it into the slightly more solid parts, and then you add to your liking your garlic powder. You can do a lot, you can do a little. I guess it depends on if you're going to come in contact with a vampire. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at making this, so usually I can tell just by smell. Hmm. Still smells a little buttery. Mmm, smell the garlic. I will do a small amount of dried parsley in my butter. I do more on my butter once I put it on my bread. I like to add a little bit more. And with this sourdough already having an Italian seasoning, this is going to be so good. Set that bowl out of the way. We're going to put our pan right over here. Now, again, sourdough, Italian sourdough. This is uh, at the Greensboro Farmer's Market off of Sandy Ridge Road. Breads and Sweets by Donna Kay. I have fallen in love with her breads, especially her frosted cinnamon, cinnamon raisin sourdough and then the Italian sourdough because, like I said, she just rolls her Italian seasonings into the bread. So I will show you that here in just a minute once I cut it. But again, that's Breads and Sweets by Donna Kay. 
All right, so we're going to set our garlic butter up there. This is going to make a mess, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Okay, so here's what I want you to see, guys. This is what I mean when I say I've fallen in love with her breads. You can just see the cheesy herbs that are in this bread. It's absolutely amazing. All I'm going to do is just put everything on the tray. I'll just fill the tray and then whatever I have left over will be for later on. And Miss Donna, if you're watching this video, thank you so very much for this fabulous bread. Got a little bit of an air pocket, so I'm actually able to fit more on my pan than I thought I was, which is exciting. I think everybody else is going to enjoy this as much as I do. I think I can get three more pieces, which means I'll have probably two or three pieces of bread left over. Just kind of smushing them on our pan, but you know what? It's edible. That's all that matters. So that stove burner. Okay, so I'm just going to pick this up. Clean up my mess here. I'm all about a clean kitchen. Or I try to be. Okay. Turn that sideways. liberal amount and by squishing the bread together it closed the gaps that were created from when she was baking this wonderful bread um, so what that does is it's going to allow the butter to get down in those cracks and crevices but it shouldn't get all over the pan Mm, this looks just amazing. Mm. My little resident fly who flew in when my kids opened the door earlier. I have to get rid of him. One stick of butter with my garlic and parsley was just enough to make some wonderful, this is going to be some ooey gooey bread, I'll tell you what. And now, a little bit of flair and fun. Just do a touch of parsley on the top. like that. Now this is ready to go in the oven. So we're going to set this over here. We're going to make sure our workspace is clean. Our corn is going and cooking and we've already got the butter done for that one. Our Brussels sprouts are going and when they come out all we have to do is drizzle those with all uh, our balsamic glaze and then those are done. Um, our carrots are going. As soon as those come out we're going to drizzle them with honey and those are done. All right, what's next? I think next we just go ahead and we get started with the steaks. 
The potatoes and the gouda, the smoked gouda, uh, we'll, we'll do here in a little bit. I've got a lot of steak to cook since we have a friend coming over. And the steaks are a little bit smaller so that that way they're easier to deal with. So turn my burner on medium high. And then while that gets toasted up, I'm going to go ahead and combine my, let's see if I can get this open here, I'm going to combine my butter. And I'm going to combine my butter with my Parmesan cheese. My chives. And these are fresh chives that I grow, so that just makes it a little bit better and more fun. And my garlic. And just to make sure we have enough, a touch of salt. All right, let's see how our pan's doing here. Oh, it's getting there. That oil's almost racing around in there. All right, we're gonna let that keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my awesome butter together here. Ooh, smell that fresh garlic. All the garlic we're eating tonight, I'm not going to be able to breathe on anybody. But you know what? Keeps you healthy. Okay. So now our garlic herb butter is ready. So I'm going to actually put this in the refrigerator also. That way it gets a chance to harden up just a touch. That way before when we're ready to serve the steaks, I can put it on there and it'll melt right across the steaks. Okay, looks like our pan should be about ready. Make sure you have oil everywhere. Yep, just a light sizzle going, I can hear it. I like to cut my steaks in all different sizes because you never know who you're going to have that wants what size. So by making them smaller, some smaller, some bigger, that allows for some people who aren't as hungry, they can eat like a smaller piece of steak versus a bigger one as well. You can also do thinner and fatter the, and cut wise as well. And I think... Yep, I've got one more. There we go. Now we're going to let them cook. Okay. Our steaks are doing good. Our vegetable vegetables, excuse me, I can talk today, are well on their way. I like to move the pan just to make sure that everything moves around inside down there. rotate the corn just to make sure everybody gets an even cook in their nice hot water bath. I'm going to set this pan over here so that that way when my steaks are cooked to the doneness that I would like them to be, I can go ahead and transfer them over. And just so that everybody's aware, these have just been patted dry and there's just a touch of salt on them. That is it. That's how simple this recipe is. You can see those are looking pretty good. So go ahead and flip them. You generally want to just let them sit and cook. Of 
course your smaller pieces are going to be done faster than your bigger ones and your bigger ones may take a little longer and then it also depends on who you're feeding as to what doneness you want my husband's more of a little past uh little little past medium medium rare towards the medium well side but it's not it's not too terribly far from that my eyes are playing tricks on me now i thought i saw something on there and i didn't Okay, so most of these look like they're about ready, so we'll pull these and set them aside. That way we can get started with the next batch. This would be much easier if I had a grill. I need to get a grill. Now we got to get this to come to a simmer, so I'll go ahead and just use my whisk to make a mess first off. And I'll just kind of get that to a simmer and then we'll move forward. I'm going to attempt to fold that up and we can just not play our tail on fire with that one. Brussels sprouts out. That way, those are done. Okay, there we go. Now we can 
I have Brussels sprouts up because they are nice and roasted. Okay, Brussels sprouts are done. That way we can plate these. I'll put the this one beside it. Just to cooperate a little. Keep a constant, consistent stir on this. Let that start getting warmed up a little bit. I'm going to put these. my liquid smoke a little bit at a time because you don't want it to be too overpowering and you just keep going until your sauce is all melted like cheese So burn her off. And add in my chives again. I grow these, so makes that a little bit better. Mix this in, and this will thicken up a little bit as it sits. Okay, so now we are done with everything, so let's get it all plated. I'll show you guys what a plate looks like here in just a second. And this is the finished product. Well, now that's fine dining made simple, don't you think? Thanks for watching. This is Christy's Kitchen, fine dining made simple. Make sure you hit the bell. You subscribe, that way you get all the notifications, and definitely hit that like button. Also, check out the information in the description below. I'll see you next time.